everyone, good evening, good evening, Sean Bean and Greek and Gigi and Jesper and Haz and Mick and Steven, good evening, Doohickey, Steffi, Lapa, Nira and Baby, a pleasure, Neuro Spicy, hello, Sus, Mick, SM, Judas, lovely to see you, I also see, um, uh, Jimmy Bunker in the chat, hello, and Mr. Snowflake, hello, I hear you're going to get your hair cut, I think that disqualifies you from the competition, but... You'd have to ask Jimmy. He seems to be setting the rules over there. Uh, Mick, thank you so much for gifting five channel memberships. Welcome or welcome back to And Baby Steven Victoria uh, Solaris. Hello. And Zs. Hi, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> Happy Monday. Oh, what a day. I'm pooped. I'm pooped and it's raining and it's cold and all I want to do is curl up into bed and go to sleep at like 8 o'clock like I did last night. But it's currently 8.08. And we've got better things to do. So today we're going to be reacting to the one, the only, the Chantal Marie, Miss Foodie Beauty, and her most recent upload, including, sorry, entitled, <laughs> Shopping an Iftar at City Centre in Kuwait during Ramadan 2024. It's 12 minutes. We'll get through it pretty quickly, because I know what you're all here for. <laughs> today, on this Monday of all days, we will be reacting to Mr. Snowflake's The Shattered Reality of Foodie Beauty, Episode 1. Now, spoilers, chat, just in case we don't get there. I don't know if we'll get through the whole thing. This might be a two-parter, and that's totally okay. It's not a problem. Oh, thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you. I finally watched the video. I'm so sorry I missed it because it was on the other channel, but I watched it, and thank you very much for the compliments. I appreciate it. Um, but I also now have you to blame for, um, for increasing my vitamin dosage. Which, to be fair, had been zero for a while, because whoopsie-daisy, I forgot to take my multivites. But I hear... Don't... Look, chat, don't tell... Don't tell Jimmy this. But... Vitamin D, magnesium, multivite, fish oil, sorted. Beard strength, on point. But we don't need to give him any help, because his beard looks luscious. Um, and I'm concerned. I'm concerned, I am. I don't know how long I can get this boy. But we'll try. <laughs> Ooh, bite... See, Sarah Marie, I had a bad, I had a bad stint with biotin. I don't know what I did. I think I put it on like a cut or something, and it hurt real bad. <laughs> I can't, I can't quite remember. Something happened. Oh, I think I put it on my face and like got some in my eye, and it was not a good time. Anyway. <laughs> um. So anyway, how are you? How are you all? <laughs> How's your weekend been? <laughs> Um, hi, my name's Zach. Lovely to meet. Sorry. Hi, my name's Zach, aka Plumpy Syntax. Um, nice to meet you if you're new and welcome back if you are returning. I am not a mental or physical healthcare professional, just a guy who lost some weight, talks about things on the internet, and watches way too much of too many people. Also wears a fun hat every now and then. But I'm also not here to bully, shame, hate, harass, or humiliate. Just here to talk about the producer and montage content that we see here on this platform because it's all about what choices, choices about what we say, choices about what we put on the internet. Choices. A really good name. Hey Leone, good to see you. <laughs> oh, I can't see Jack from I can't see Jack in Brisbane, Leone. It is entirely it's just it's been miserable all day. Actually it's lovely weather. I hate saying it's miserable because I love this weather. It's like sub twenty five degrees. It's just been a slow grey drizzle all day. And like I said, all I want to do is spend it under the covers. But I got things to do. <laughs> Uh, let's get into Chantel's latest upload. I know it's a little bit of a snooze fest, but that's okay. We will do shh, as we always do and try to make it a little bit entertaining before we get on to the star of the show and his friend, Voodoo. <laughs> Thank you so much for gifting five channel mem memberships, mate. I appreciate it. Welcome or welcome back to Just a Girl, uh, Nell, Travis. Lovely to see you today. I hope you're well. Ella and Pennsylvania Pixie. Hello. Good to see you all. Please make sure you thank the lovely Voodoo for the gift. All right, let's get started. Let's get to, let's get to, as they used to say uh, back in the day. Let's go. Hi, welcome back to another video. Still hasn't, no, it's never going to happen. That, that intro is going to be the same for forever. Well, hello there. Did you know that you can request a private video from me made just for you that you can keep forever and ever? I really want to, look, you know me, chat. I'm really interested in Foodie's back end, and I would love to know... I would love to know how many cameo requests she's actually getting. Not yep. even for like a budgetary standpoint, just from a number. I do love a number. I love a number. That's right. I can wish you or a loved one a happy birthday or even give you a pep talk. Sal asked the question, is her audio intentionally terrible? Yes. Well, no, but yes. <laughs> I'm in Kuwait, so if you want a cameo at a specific location. Natural Ginger, lovely to see you, my friend. I hope you're well. 
Hello, hello. Good to see you. Like a nice beach or a mall, just let me know. Get yours today and don't delay. Oh, phrasing. Whoops. Oh, little birds. Oh my god, they're so cute. Oh, chat. Help help me identify a bird. I, You know what? One day, one day in the future, I can see myself... Because I'm already in my socks and Birks um, era. I wonder if Birkenstocks... Uh, Birkenstocks. <gasps> Birkenstocks? I wonder if Birkenstocks sell a brand of socks called Birkenstocks. I hope they do. Otherwise, they're missing out. Um, I... <laughs> Sorry, the, <laughs> the echoey microphone is pointed directly at me. Uh, I'm already entering my Birkenstocks and sandal sandals era. I truly... Birkenstocks and socks era. Why is that so hard to say? I... <laughs> I would very much enjoy... I would very much enjoy bird watching in my um, in my twilight era. I feel. <laughs> also, is that a dead fish or is that just rubbish back there? These are pretty birds. I wonder what they're called. Does anyone know what type of birds these are? I would like to know. Oh, it's a plastic bottle. Okay, not a fish. <laughs> I thought it was rubbish. These poor birds. <laughs> You'd have to wear Birkin socks with Birkin stocks. Birkin, yes. Birkin stocks, Birkin socks, Birkin. I'm trying to think. Birkin stockings. Here we go. Now we're on a. Now we're on a train. Now we're on a think train, or a bone train. Birkin stocks and Birkin stockings. Come on, it writes itself. Birkin Crocs. It's Birkins on the bottom and Crocs on the top. Birkenstocks, if you're out there. <laughs> I know you don't need, like, an ideas guy. I'm sure you've got plenty. But if you've got room for an ideas guy, I'm just saying, I'm right here. Sounds awful. <laughs> well, do you know what? What would you prefer? The idea of a Birkenkroc or the idea of sitting there and watching 12 minutes worth of foodie? <laughs> what is going on? Hey guys, we're here at the... Jesus! <laughs> City centre, we're going to pick up a few things, have a look around. I'm this is... Look, this is what you're all seeing. You're seeing a quarter. This is a hole, and this is this this is another hole. <laughs> uh, this look, she does she she does give good Rocky Horror Picture Mail. You can't you can't deny it. Particularly looking for a silver chain for. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this one down. Sorry. <laughs> A charm that I found that was my grandmother's, so I want to wear it as a necklace. So the city center is like a huge... Okay, we're going to pull out. Sorry. Sorry! <laughs> huge center where you, there's so many things. You can get clothes, food, uh, housewares, all kinds of things. So Can you get a lint roller? Because Julia's left her mark on you. By the way, how is Julia? Vaccinated? Spayed? No? Shocking. Yeah, yellow. Let's go shop. I don't know if Mr. Snowflake knows this or yet. Yeah, not yet. But Foodie Beauty... Tends to neglect her pets, including poor Julia. Bing. Mm. Yeah, that is a bit of a weird one, Connie. Good point. She found her grandmother's charm. I don't know. I don't know where, because last time she went back to Canada, it was December. So maybe it got dropped. Like, maybe, maybe they packed it in her suitcase and she just never mentioned it. Well, Stephen, she's very impulsive. <laughs> she woke up this afternoon and she said, you know what? I need to go and buy a chain. Impulsive. Speaking of, did you all watch Drag Race on the weekend? Morphine? What a queen. What a queen. Poor Dawn. Poor, like, it's not poor dear anymore in my, in my household. It's poor Dawn. Poor Dawn. Dawn didn't deserve that. Poor Dawn clothes here bodied 
in a word, <laughs> Dawn was bodied. <laughs> and Morphine bodied! <laughs> Someone said Dawn was trying to cast a spell to change the song. Do you know what? Give her a Stevie Nicks song and I feel like she would do just as well as Thorgy. Which was absolutely adequate and fine and Thorgy should never have gone on that episode. <laughs> Don't get me started! <laughs> I bought a shirt from this place once. That blue one I have. The blue like tartan one that we never see. We really don't see any fashions anymore, do we? No fashions. No. Oh, Christy, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. I hope you're having a good day. I need to go back. I need to work out what's going on here. We're just in a we're in a mall, right? We're in a mall. What the what, why are there ducks and pillows? It's just something for everyone. I love that. Oh, Poopy was in charge of the camera to get this. How awkward. Chat. Um, I've said this before about foodies' influencer shenanigans. Imagine seeing people like this out in public. That's nothing on, like, Chantel, period. But, like, just ima imagine someone just walking through a shopping centre. Imagine you're at your local Westfields, okay? You walk, you're at your Westfields, you're at your Wal Woolies or Coles or IGA or, or wherever. And you're walking down an aisle and all of a sudden you see someone walking and floating around them like the most annoying fly on a turd is someone shoving their camera in their face, doing full 360s, zoom-ins. Ma'am, stop. Put it away. We're in public here. <laughs> it's those type of people who I would see in public and be like, I need to go this way. I, do, I need to go in every direction that they are not in. Excuse me. <laughs> This wood here, guys, this is what they make bopur with. Um, incense. You burn it on uh, the coals. And they make fragrances also. All right. Oh, so Poopy could tell us more about that. I never think we're getting that warehouse tour. All right, so we're going to look for a silver chain here at this. Minty Lime, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. Store. You're well. <laughs> Jewelry store. Sadly. Hey, one, good to see you. Thank you very much for commenting on the last upload, by the way. I, I'm glad you appreciated the joke. Thank you. We checked a few places, but we couldn't find one that had exactly what I'm looking for. A type of real silver chain in my size. Just the chain that doesn't come with the charm. So I'm going to have to keep looking. So You know, you can just like buy the chain with the charm and swap the charm, right? Actually, most of us, I'm sure, would be happy to just keep the charm if you wanted to put your own charm on it. They'll still like charge you the same price, but... Hopefully in another... I think it's it's been a really long time because when I think of like like neck pieces i think of ambie's <laughs> ambie's choker mostly but i think it's been a, a quite a time since we've seen foodie in a necklace so wait 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 there's a memory coming back to me didn't she didn't she have an, a leather strap necklace with like a it had her birthstone on it what's lady gaga's birthstone everyone lady gaga birthstone chris Foodie's got the same birthday as Lady Gaga, just so you know. The diamond? Okay, it wasn't a diamond. No, that was just what she was wearing. What is it? <laughs> is it diamond? Didn't she... She got <laughs> fries. No, Sarah Marie, you're right. It was aqua, aquamarine. She had a... um, She had, like, a chunk of aqu aquamarine wrapped in, like, a leather stringy thing. This was around the time of Big Turk. I think she, didn't she say her mum bought it for her or something? Exactly. Thank you, chat. Appreciate you all. <laughs> Love her. We did forget the boss necklace. There's been, actually, to be fair, there has been a few iconic necklaces. There's been the boss necklace that featured one time because she didn't realise how absolutely ridiculous it looked. And then it got lost in the trash of the villa. There was the aquamarine on leather strappy business. And then, of course, there was the golden heart. The little golden heart. Hmm. 
Oh, Sam, lovely to see you today. I hope you're well. Happy Monday. As an April Aries, I'm a rose quartz. Ooh. Lush. I think I'm pearl? No, not Pearl. It's something that I don't... Oh, no, it's Aquamarine for Pisces as well. Wait, how is it both? Is that just for March? No, wait, how is it... Wait. <laughs> Aries' birthstone is diamond. So how was she saying that her birthstone was Aquamarine? Ha <laughs> oh, Amethyst, not Aquamarine. Do you know what? Daddy G's giving me all types of bad answers today. Somewhere in Kuwait. I will find one, I'm sure. Yeah, March birthstone is aquamarine. Anyway. Amethyst is February, so aquamarine and Pisces. Oh, Aquarius and Pisces. Right, 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 right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. See, I wasn't sure if it was months or star signs. Very confusing. Oh, birthstones go by months. Okay, March birthstone is aquamarine. That means hers is aquamarine. Right. Never mind, everyone. I'm just confusing myself. It's fine. Look at this cool escalator with no stairs on it. Surely she's seen... Hold the phone. Hold... Hold... Pardon... Pardon the sweats. Hold the fuck on. Does she... Is she okay? Big question to ask. Is she okay? Look at this. Look at this escalator with no stairs on it. Man, we've seen you take these like, like everywhere. Like at the, at the other mall with the movies. Like every airport you've ever been in. <laughs> look at this cool escalator with no stairs on it. Chat, something's wrong. <laughs> she doesn't get out much. Some, some, something's going on. I think Foodie's... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Foodie's okay. I think something's going wrong. Whee! <laughs> Windmill! <laughs> Ooh, Redberry, go there. <laughs> so here's the food court, it's still closed until Maghreb time, which will be in about an hour. Also, I want to say I got recognized in public by a fan, so help- Ah, this is what she mentioned in that live stream we were watching the other Hello day. Hello to you. Thank you for saying hi. I really appreciate that. Thanks for watching me. Oh, do you think it's like that security guard who recognized them at the mall that time back in Canada? That was, um, that was James and Foodie. Remember that? Aha. I wonder if we'll get a shot of Foodie in the wild. Squeeze, tight squeeze. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna go get some snacks. <laughs> Yo. Why did you sit down first? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I don't need snacks. Whatever. All right, guys, we found an. Ma'am, no one said anything. You're saying you're saying your own stuff. Arcade, and because I'm a big kid. Wait, are we getting snacks at the arcade, ma'am? <laughs> the timeline. I love arcades. <laughs> Aw, I want a cute, creepy bee person. She missed the obvious, I could call it a beezer. Oh dear. Something's wrong with Foodie today. And by today, this was obviously done like a week ago, but something's wrong. So I just wanted to show you guys this fun little area they had here inside this gigantic shopping center. This is one of those things you can <laughs> grab this. Peep the sketches. Heavy hammer and then hit it and try to get as much points as he can we'll get poopy to do it we know he's a um, muscle bound man won't take my hand from my god it's a formative moment in my in my childhood watching sister act no handsome face could ever take the place um yeah get poopy to do it <laughs> And this, I don't know what that is. I think like a dancing station. And they even had a nice, big, full-size bowling alley Ooh. inside. And we do want to go bowling again. So stay tuned for that. Leonie, it is giving big time zone vibes, yeah. Except usually, even like in the middle of the day, somehow time zone seems to be filled with people. All right. Whee! 
Oh, we're moving away from the snacks? We're leaving the food court to go do more shopping because we still have to wait and all I can smell is food and it smells so good. And I'm so thirsty. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I think she woke up at about 2 p.m. Personally. Also, the center. Oh my goodness, milk tea. Lovely to see you today. I hope you're well. Hi, hi, hi. I watched your most recent upload. It was wonderful. There's a huge grocery store inside of sorts, and they had some good deals, so we picked up a few things, mostly just some snacks and some things at the deli, you know, like cheese, pickled beets, all in. Weird that she kept that thing in about, that bit in about the snacks. Very strange. Oh no, milk tea, heartbreak. First sourdough was an abject failure. Walk me through it, mate. What happened? I need, I, I, well, I don't need to know, but I would like to know. What, hap what ha happened? I'm gonna guess what what happened to me all way, all the damn time was I was impatient with the feeding of the starter, didn't allow it to rise, and therefore it wasn't super active when I folded it into the dough. And adding salt at the wrong time. That can also be a downer. That's okay. <laughs> we live and learn. <laughs> Toby, hello, good to see you. And some deli meat. Everybody else is noticing, like, we, look, the talking point in this is we know that foodie has filters. It is absolutely wild when you put like grids on the line or when, oh, sorry, grids on the ground, lines on the ground or a trolley because look at this son of a bitch. <laughs> that is a limousine length trolley. Two problems. I think the starter was too weak. Okay. Well, that's okay. You can work on that. I mean, I I had a starter for the longest time and I, I saw that like as I was doing it, the more the more I'd take a bit out and feed it and make it grow and, and do all of that, like the weaker it was getting, I felt like I was diluting the yeast somehow because I also kept it in a fridge. So what I did with that was I took the whole starter jiggly out and then halved it through half in the bin, added equal parts water flour to weight and then did that like twice to get the like natural yeasts to grow. Speaking about natural yeast, the natural yeast to grow. Um, Cause I felt like the longer I kept it in the fridge and didn't bring it out to room temperature, the like, like slower it was, I guess that's, I guess that's the best way to say it. The slower it was. Um, Siege, thank you for being here for 25 months, mate. Siege says, happy Monday. Thanks for keeping me company at work. Oh, my pleasure, mate. I hope you're having a fabulous day at work. It's good to see you. <laughs> That's what I've done. I've changed the lid. Yeah, so I can get a bit more air. Yeah, I th I, look, I, honestly, bread making is a science, not an art. You'll, you'll nail it. It's, yeah. As for the salt, I tend to... It's a bit hard. I, I tend to add the salt, like after combining well after adding flour and leaving like a little bit of water so i'll add like the the metric of water and flour and then create the dough and then i'll add the salt to a little bit of additional water and pour that in and then fold or knead the salty water into it that's my trick just to help like the yeah the flour and the yeast essentially not bond but activate and then yeah, not not like shocking the um the yeast with salt, I guess is the is my trick. Hmm. Welsh says I've started my starter. Oh cool. It <laughs> everyone's starting bread. Great. It uh, rises and when it peaks it looks dry on top. Um that could be okay. I mean I would assume that you're probably not in a super um super like humid environment, so there's not a lot of water or maybe too humid of an environment, or it's too hot, and so you're getting a little bit of, like, skin or film on top, you can just kind of, like, cut that off. You don't need to use that. I wouldn't use it, because you get, like, a different texture in your bread if you have that. Yeah, I'd throw that away. Just the top. The top's fine. Just the top. Anyway, Foodie's driving a limousine cart. That's <laughs> that's the long and short of it. <laughs> Is that the deli? You know, like, cheese, pickled beef. Oh, that's a great idea, Milk. I'd love to see it. It's olives and some deli meat, stuff like that. But there's no such thing as bad bread, and even if the bread doesn't rise and you bake it, it's just extra dense, it's fine. Or you can take the dough if it hasn't risen and like make tiny like um, like crackers, P like pinch a bit of the dough off, roll it really flat and put it in the oven and you can make like lavosh bread and stuff. 
Like just really thin, crispy bread. It's great. Sorry, Foodie. I've, I'm, talk I'm talking bread talk over here. I'm, I know you've got important things going on. Like cheese. Foodie could be having these conversations with her chat, you know, and I would find it so interesting. But she just doesn't. Such a shame. Beets, olives, and some deli meat, stuff like that. Lapa, 100%, yes. This is me picking up these butter and herb crackers that I really like in soup. Fuck, you don't say. This is me picking up crackers. Oop, they're so good. And I thought this was cute. Ramadan decorated Nutella jars. Do you think that's in the cart? I think that might be in the cart. Oh my god, they've got cookies there called Chunkies. <laughs> I love that so much. Those chips are called Chunkies. <laughs> It could only be made better if they were chunkles, but chunkies is pretty. Nine hundred fills. That's what, like, three dollars? No, th three. Three buckaroos. Close. Oh, that's very cute milk. See, Kinder is so dangerous. It honestly is. First of all, Americans think Kinder Surprise are dangerous because of the toys inside, which I understand. I get it. But y'all, there is there is very there's very little in this world that could stop me during like a three p.m. snacky zacky moment. There's very little in the world that could stop me from a white chocolate Kinder Bueno. Very little. They're really good. Really, really good. Hey Lisa, good to see you. So these huge bag of sweets are sold for a traditional Kui celebration here during Ramadan called I'm afraid. Gokeyan, where children will dress up in traditional Kuwaiti attire such as Dara and Dishtasha and will go door to door asking for candies and nuts and in exchange they usually sing songs and uh, are dressed up. Are you buying that for that or are you buying that for you? And this is Al Rafai, same as Salah's family name, and it's a popular roastery here in Kuwait. I thought it was R A F A I, not Al Rafai. I know that's not how you pronounce it, but that's how my brain would say it. I thought it wasn't spelled that way. What are you talking about? Wait, Syrian. Okay, whatever. Not not important. Elvin, your local grocery store sells Tim Tams now. I did see that they were launching in the States or Canada or Europe or somewhere. I saw a story about them. They are Moorish. Chat, if you have never had a Tim Tam before and all of a sudden you walk into the grocery stores and you see Arnott's Tim Tams on the shelves, one, be careful. Two, you have to learn how to do a Tim Tam slam. There's like the delicate way and the not so delicate way. Both ways end up with chocolate on your finger. What's a Tim Tam? It is two chocolate biscuits with a chocolate like icing filling, like a buttercream filling almost, coated in tempered chocolate. It's it's a chocolate lover's dream. And here in Australia we have like every flavour combination you can think of under the sun. I'm partial to the creamy caramel inside, so it's like buttercream with a fine, a thin like strip of gooey, ooey gooey caramel chocolate biscuits, chocolate covering. But then they go all out with some wild ass flavors. There's mint chocolate. To be fair, I love mint chocolate, but only in ice cream, not in biscuit flavor. You can keep that, thank you very much. Um, they do like a white chocolate strawberry one. They do all sorts. It's great. I have a huge double coat or nothing um, planner. Thank you very much for being so, so brave and so proud with your correct opinion. You are right, double coat or nothing. Tank section here. Do you guys remember Tang? As oh, has I'm so sorry, mate. As kids. <laughs> if if I had to if I had to say Oreo or Tim Tam, I'd have to say Tim Tam, and that's not like that's not Australian pride or anything. That's it's just as, as someone who quite enjoys a chocolate biscuit, superior chocolate biscuit. So Salah ran back to the car to put all the groceries in so we could eat in the food court. And he caught the sun. Ooh, who said different shopping cart? 
Someone's got eyes. They have a huge Tang section here. Do you guys remember Tang as kids? <laughs> it is a different shopping cart. Did they like unpack it at the counter and then put it in bags and put it in a different one? Maybe this is like the shen Shenta? The Senta's shopping cart. Thank you, Ann Baby. Thank you. Oh, are they in Walmart now? Uh oh. Be careful, everyone. So Salah ran back to the car to put all the groceries in so we could eat in the food court. And <laughs> of course. He caught the sun going down. There was about five minutes left to Maghrib time, or when Iftar starts, when we can break our fast. So I was waiting in the food court. No, Millie, this is uh, today's video, but she, I think it's filmed last week. We had already ordered the food and the sun was going down. What a sight. On his way back in, he captured some of the traditional Kuwaiti clothing that children would wear for Gurdjian. So cute. I love it. And look at this cute little mannequin. Oh, with a bag. <laughs> So they have these nice hand washing stations in the food court. So I took it upon myself to give my hands a ritz with some water. So for How performative. Uh, Annie with an L, good morning, lovely. I hope you have a big cup of coffee. Thank you for the support as always. It's not at all required, but very much appreciate it. Annie says, Zach, does Tim Tam do gluten-free in Australia because they don't in Canada, so I have to pick Oreo. I think they do, actually. I think it. they recently... Um, I swear I saw them recently. Tim Tam gluten-free. Um, yeah, they do. They, they only have the classic flavour, which is the classic chocolate flavour. So chocolate biscuits, chocolate cream, chocolate coating. Um, they do, yeah. They have like a green little part of the packaging that says gluten-free. So yes. Do you need a packet? <laughs> for iftar we decided to try this italian restaurant that didn't serve italian food oh, mick says you can order the gluten-free ones off their website there you go yeah rob roy i think it's the 28th she turns 40 this month she has the same birthday as lady gaga hey ashley okay sorry i need to go back because this food court Give my hands a ritz with some water. Sorry, getting distracted by bread and Tim Tam talk. So for Iftar, we... I have not had a high amount of carbohydrates today. Decided to try this Italian restaurant that didn't serve Italian food. Classic. I'm... I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused as to what we're looking at here. Ooh, salad. Great flakes. Uh huh. Pardon me. Ooh, oranges. What have we got here? Code red. Oh, isn't that that energy drink that Poopy loves? Yes. Strawberry Fanta, Coca Cola, Coke Zero. Zero sugar beverages. Ooh, I fuck with a sugar free watermelon flavor. I do. So for my meal, I had more Chinese food. Spicy potatoes, chow mein. More Chinese food from Italian restaurant. And spicy chicken, a pomegranate soda, and some a side of grape leaves. And of course, uh, they give you some dates to break your fast with, and a ice cold bottle of water. I can't wait to drink that, let me tell you. So yeah, Italian restaurant that serves um, more Chinese. And Salah opted for the chicken, like I had. You said chicken, and that's in the bottom right. So it's it's chicken, sauce, carrot, rice. What are these? <laughs> I thought this was some kind of tiramisu from the top, but I feel like this is a pasta bake. Some pasta bechamel. Ma'am, that's a pasta bake. Call it what it is. Do you all call this a pasta bake? <laughs> it's like a cake of pasta. <laughs> and you got two of them. <laughs> I, look, don't get me wrong, I have many, I have had many a pasta bake in my day. That's, that's just a pasta bake. <laughs> Tiramisu on the top, pasta on the bottom. And some rice. That's like, it's bechamel and maybe tuna or something. Like, that would be the easy one. Like a tuna bake with pasta. Ah, 
and a orange Kinza drink and water, of course, as well. Jesus, my ears. We really didn't need the audio in the back here. It is so loud. Shockingly good. Don't forget to chew these ones, dear. I... Look, you know me, I don't talk about the physicality if I can avoid it. Foodie, I'm just gonna say this. You... It seems like you might be really uncomfortable here. I don't, I don't know. I would have, if it were me, I would have taken this food and gone to sit in the car and eaten it. Or like driven home and eaten it. I don't know. This seems very uncomfortable. Like, like she's, I don't know. And with her sciatica and everything, it seems like she's got, she's got like one leg up on the railing, which is a wild thing to say, but like up on the like foot of the railing. And then she's like, she's half like, I oh, don't know, this seems really uncomfortable. Oh, see, has I thought that's what it would be. Let's dig in. I, yeah, okay. <laughs> Even like, surely there's like a bench or something to sit at that's not in the food court. Just take your food, take your food, find a comfy seat. Everybody deserves a comfy seat. Oh, jeez, oh no. Oh, didn't we? Sorry, this might be all over the shop with the timeline, but I thought we just ate. Now we're at popcorn. Very good. Popcorn, popcorn is an all time food. Here it looks like we have more traditional Gagayan outfits, this time for girls and young ladies. She did that thing again. Windmill. Lanterns. Hello. Hello, dear. Oh, kitties. This must be where she got Julia from. Oh my god, there's so many of them. They're hunting. You can see it in their eyes. Kylie Minogue. Oh, precious beans! Look at them! Oh my god! Oh, what happened here? Oh, foodie, as much as I love them, maybe don't touch them if you've got a ha like a cat at home that's unvaccinated. Like, you're gonna touch them and not wash your hands, and you might pick up something that's gonna get to Julia, and that would probably be a bad idea. Very good of them. They're so noisy. He'll scratch you. Come. Yeah, no touchies. Oh, precious beans. All right, so we're not going to be watching very Delta today. Instead, everybody in the chat, can I get a big drum roll, please? Some hands up and some big energy as we we move. We move on to the shattered reality of Foodie Beauty, episode one, by the one, the only, Mr. Snowflake, and his friend, Jimmy Bunker. We're going to be watching this at 1.25 times speed, because that's just, like, how I do it, and I hope that's okay. Thank you all for the drums, I appreciate you. Chantal Marie. Oh, no, we're starting straight off. I should have got a card again. You know what, chat? Last week I was shopping for one, and I just couldn't find the right purple. It was a shame. I did find some really nice, like, periwinkle, like, lilac light purple, but I'm trying to move into darker tones with it being winter and all. You know. But it's happening, everyone. Mariam, Foodie Beauty. She's had a few different names over the years, but for this, we're just going to... 
D I uh, do sorry, I see you. I'm gonna stick with Foodie, Foodie B. How you doing? <laughs> she's uh she's somebody I've wanted to cover for a while. By the way, chat, just so you know, this is probably gonna take a really long time and we might only get halfway through it because I'm gonna stop every 30 seconds to say something. Um but also if you oh, I've also been on top chat this whole time. Chat, whoopsie daisy. Also, if you haven't watched this documentary episode yet, please feel free. The link is in the description down below. Tell Mr. Cardigan I sent you. But also, it's three weeks old, so I expect most of you have seen it already. But if you've given it one watch, maybe you have nothing to watch later this afternoon and you could give it a second watch. If you wanted to. That's choice. I did do two episodes of an old foodie series. Like two years ago, something like that. But to be honest, I just got bored. It's very relatable in the current timeline. I'm not going to lie. I thought she was just too boring. It, and it was just so similar to Amber. They're like the same person. Well, <laughs> overeat doing mukbangs. I don't know. The old man era really put a different shine on foodie. Trying to lose weight, failing. It was. I just thought it was dead boring. But I thought I'll come back to it one day. Maybe when I finish it by the argument, which I've done now. It, Jimmy, you are correct. It is a fine-looking cardigan. Yeah. So I thought, okay, we'll, we'll finally. Do... I don't think I've got anything I could compete with for that cardigan. Foodie, there's been lots of people giving me advice on this series. Uh, one person said. Amber is the... And a lapel microphone? What a professional. Hill ...to get to the mountain that is Foodie Beauty, which I quite liked. And everybody was telling me that she's crazier than Amber, gets crazier than Amber, and I thought, nah. I've, I've seen the Amberverse, I've seen how she mistreats her pets. I'm glad he took all of our advice, to be fair. Also, living for the 90s school photo backdrop. Uh, I don't care what Foodie says. Uh, partners, everybody. All the lies. It won't get worse than that. It won't get worse than that world. Um... And if you like me, you watched this yesterday. <laughs> oh, I was a month ago. And you think, nah, there's no way it's going to get worse than a. Oh, yeah, Lapa, I did see that chat and anyone on the rewatch. Just so you know, some insider tea, some insider gossip. Um, Mr. Snowflake will be. Well, a a aims, pending life, aims to release episode two on Foodie's birthday. <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> then the underverse. How. What, what can happen that makes it crazier? Well. So much. So much. My dude. Oh, remember when Foodie got real mad at this? Yes! <laughs> Doohickey, thank you for being here for 10 months. Doohickey says, Mr. Cardigan got Chantel episode 2 for a 40th. That's a very thoughtful gift. You know, someone making a video just for you and everybody else on the internet, I suppose, for your birthday? How kind! Oh yeah, Milk, she will be just big rage, high blood pressure. <laughs> Sped up this song as a bop. Even her pinkies will have pinkies milk. <laughs> Mr. Snowflake, welcome back. I hope your uh, barber trip was a successful one. Just a small town girl. Okay, so I've been annoying people recently with this. Not just online, but offline as well. There will be like, there will be a melody. I'm so terrible at music. My only reference for music is pop culture. Um, there will be like, there will be a melody. There will be like three strings, tones, notes, chords, getting somewhere, of a song. And my brain will instantly go to the pop culture reference. That's, um, Midnight Train Going Anywhere, whatever. That's Glee. That's that Glee episode. <laughs> I'm not happy. Born on oh. March 28th, 1980. Sorry, chat. I'm just bumping the audio. Because I'm too loud this time. <laughs> Before. I weighed 8 pounds, 13 ounces. Oh yeah, it's Gurney. That's the band who plays it. Gurney, don't stop believing. 
Certified bank. I'm from Cornwall, Ontario. I know it mostly from Glee. Yo. I have one sister. Oh my god, Mr. Snowflake, you love Glee too? Thanks, Jimmy. We have the same mother. I'm close to her, and I have two um, half-brothers. Uh, we have the same dad. And since I don't really see my dad a lot, I've actually never met these boys, which is kind of sad. It was very taboo for her to be pregnant in high school at her age, uh, 16, so she was in a lot of trouble with that. My mother and I were on our own, and... Uh, she was a single teenage mom. She was 17 when she had- I feel like I could almost place the um, the video that this comes from. Almost. Had me. And we moved- Not away. that I care to. It's just like sitting in the back there. Away from the family home, from her mother and father. We were, li were living with them for a while. She wanted to move out on her own and do it on her own. And uh, my father was an alcoholic, so she left him and didn't let him around me for a long time. Until he sobered up. Mrs. Snowflake, sweetie, I think you're a little bit behind. We were on welfare, <laughs> and... Uh, oh, wait, unless you're talking about Gurney, in which case you're perfectly up to speed. Uh, <laughs> but I, I remember her always... We were always very close to one another. I always felt love... I, I definitely feel like this talking... Like, sorry, this clip came from a mukbang, yes. From her, if not from anybody else in the world, from her uh, and my grandmother, but uh, a lot from her... A big part of who I am, I've always loved creepy things, even from a young age. I've always liked really creepy stuff as a kid, like Beetlejuice, um, Are You Afraid of the Dark, even Freddy Krueger, you know? But I've always loved the macabre and the- oh, The editing on this. Dark and the creepy. So good. And there's something that happened- <laughs> Milk. Same. To me. <laughs> when I was in school. I feel like I do it right at the beginning of the stream, and then it just defaults back to top chat. Then I get sad. Something very cruel. I just, I never told anybody about it because it's so humiliating. Is this the tomato thing? And I don't know if I'll ever be ready to talk about it. I feel like it was. I've never thing. told anybody about it. Not even my mother. And I think that's <clears throat> partly why I have so much hatred towards humanity. I think it was probably the tomato thing. Towards people? Tomato. Not the easiest start of life there, if you believe her. Uh, it sounded like she grew up very poor. He's so cynical! <laughs> grew up with an alcoholic dad who wasn't really around. It's not easy. But it sounded like she was at least loved by a mother and a grandmother. Yeah, Dark Robert Ducky. What was the tomato thing? Wasn't she at like a school lunch or something? People were throwing slices of tomatoes at her. I forget what kicked off that incident. But then I just remember like when Shanta would... Um, I don't want to say bully. Antagonise. <laughs> When Shanta would antagonize the chat, they used to throw tomatoes at her in the chat. Back when she, like, had a chat. She may not have known who her brothers were, but she would end up getting herself a little sister who was 11 years younger than her, Natalie, or on that. And I watched as many videos as I could about Foodie's childhood to get, to get all the information. And the one thing she brought up every single time, more than anything else, was food. DX had that phrase in the chat, Jesus. I don't remember too much about my childhood but um i know that whenever i uh you know i was spoiled a lot by my, my grandparents and my grandmother on my dad's side would babysit me a lot uh you know my mom would be working or whatever after school uh she would just be sinking further thank you for being here for four months sinking says poppy at two times speed to catch up is hilarious FYI. do i sound like a chipmunk and which one is it remember the food she made probably not alvin i mean that's all that's all that i remember in theodore is he the short one feel like I'd be Theodore. That comforting feeling about going to her house and she would sit at the stove smoking and making her sweet and sour meatballs. She made chicken nuggets with this like Diana sauce. I remember loving that. These Oh boy, things have not changed. Magic moment. Not the sweet and sour sauce thing, but the fact that like foodie just kind of goes on about food. Vanilla puddings and butterscotch puddings. Oh my gosh, those were good. Was Simon the short one? Okay. And she would give me some. He's the green top, right? Some, and then I would ask for more, so she would give me more. I would ask for more until she yelled at me, and she would say, C'est assez là! Uh, Britney Spears, give me more. You know, like in French, like, that's enough. My grandmother, uh, she let me just come over and just raid her cupboards. Uh, I would just, the first thing I would do is go to her cupboards, find snacks, and I think just eating snacks at her place all day long, um, you know, it would just be, uh, food was just involved in my life every single day. That, it's something that I've just realized not long ago that I have a problem. And sadly, we kind of saw how all of that developed into never taking herself seriously, never 
They were actually sticking to mental health assistance, and here we are. Good. Great. Listening to her there. Yeah, she admits she was a spoiled kid. No. Theodore is the short one in green. Simon is the tall one. Right, okay, so I'm Theodore. But usually ends well that. And she would admit later that she had a problem with food. And that problem would follow her through her entire YouTube career. Foodie began her channel back in 2016. Ah, oh, work, I remember watching this first one. And to me, it seemed like just another YouTube channel at first. I couldn't see any hints of what was to come later. Today. I mean, terrible, yes. <laughs> this video uh, tutorial will be a tutorial on a no makeup makeup look. She would to be fair, my mind is going back to like Ambie's first video. Mm, hi, I'm Amberlynn and <laughs> This channel is going to be about my weight loss journey. I've seen um, a lot of people online um, making videos and I thought, you know, I'd do it too. And it is funny because I, f I feel like most people, the large majority of people when they first make content, like go back and watch my first reaction. Terrible. <laughs> and I'm so... I'm so nervous and afraid of like what I'm going to say. Meanwhile, this was only three years ago. Now I'm just, now I'm so loud. <laughs> Do makeup tutorials, talk about fashion. So these are 3X jeggings, okay? Nice and flowy, <laughs> fits me. Talk about her life. She would show off her cats, all normal stuff. You can't get much more normal than cats on the internet. Next is just a flake. <laughs> They're gonna see Sam. They're gonna see what you do, Sam. What you do, Sam? Oh no, one, you just gotta pull off the band-aid, mate. You just gotta do it. Cause in the like as you as you kinda go through the YouTube stuff, you realize that people people see through the BS really quickly. Um and it doesn't matter whether or not you've got like ten people watching you or like ten thousand people watching you. Um people people of all walks of life like can it's like watching Chantal. It's like oh like you can tell the shitty fake personalities, you can tell the influencer voice, you can tell, like, the lies, you can tell, and you don't need to watch people for a long time, but, like, we have something in our lizard brain when we watch, like, even, even, like, people on TikTok and stuff, like, if you, if you watch enough con, like, a few pieces of content, your lizard brain just starts screaming and being like, this isn't reality, this isn't how, like, real people speak or function or, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> not real. You disrupted our cuddle session, BB Chance. Are you gonna cuddle me? Come here, pretty girl. Pretty girl. The channel wasn't exactly set in the world alight. She only really began to get noticed when she did her first mukbang. And I remember when I first started, one of my first reactions to Chantel was watching her, um, her like top viewed content. Cause I was like, oh, cool, interesting. Like, let's watch. And I'm pretty sure this like lasagna mukbang at that time was still in like the top three. And like any good YouTuber, once she found something that got her views, she did more and more. Why do you think I'm here doing this video? What made you start a YouTube? Well, I like to hear myself talk, and... Uh, screen, screen. I always remembered something a friend told me a long, long time ago when we were at a party, and he said, uh, I think I was like 16, and he told me, you should have your own show. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna call- Oh, Paul, you're here for the history because there's a lot you don't know. That's okay, feel free to ask us any questions. Chat's pretty, chat's pretty well into the historics of foodie. I'm gonna create a channel, I'm gonna call it The Chantal Show, and I'm just gonna do whatever the hell I want. And if people like me for my- Chantal Show, Chantopolis, Pete's and Chantal, Chantal Marie, Foodie Beauty, Big Beautiful Me, <laughs> Everyday Miriam. I feel like there's a whole heap of changes in there that I'm missing. Personality. It's been a lot. <laughs> they wanna watch me, that's great, you know? Um, if not, nothing, I mean, no hard feelings, you know? I like people paying attention to me. <laughs> I like having people's attention. That's Full stop, the end. Close the video. I figured- We figured out the end. answer. Shantopolis, that's right, that yes. Shantop with a period, yes. That's what I like. Yup. Being massively overweight, like she was, mukbangs, didn't sound like the best idea, but- No, no, they really do not. <laughs> there was an audience for it. It's it's why Amberlynn Reed did them. Hungry fat chick. Do you know what's wild as well? If you watch Ambie's mukbangs and then you compare them to Foodie's mukbangs, they are so different. Mikocado Avocado. So different. Life by Jen. All those people mentioned there clearly had issues with food. And I don't think you can look at Foodie Beauty without realizing, yeah, she had a massive problem with food as well. I drank a whole gravy. Like, I got gravy and I drank it. Like, it was juice. Like, oh, was that the one where she was parked in the hospital talking about how her doctor was telling her? 
maybe you shouldn't eat in the car. I think that was that one. She did seem quite normal at this stage. She seemed quite nice. Well, she seemed all right. So um, I have to do something right now. I have to take an elevator and I'm deathly afraid of elevators. I hate I have one, Shady. elevators. She has a bad cold and I have to go up there and I have to help her. So I have to be brave. So uh, I remember that the last time years ago when I made a video on it. I thought she seems all right. She seems fine. I'm not a big fan of people stuffing the face with food, which was her whole shtick at this point. Uh, but she did make some videos. And being gross. Don't forget being gross. Was uh, she did some singing videos, which we're going to listen to. Don't do it. Please don't do it. When I stop being a boomer. It's better slightly sped up. Because it's over quicker. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. No. We've also got... How dare you, Mr. Snowflake. Knock, 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 the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The and is blowing I only noticed this one recently. We've got a song by the king himself, not Michael B. Petty. <laughs> um, <laughs> Elvis Presley, take it away. <laughs> You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Cry all the time. Yikes. Well, you ain't never called a rabbit. I can't, you ain't I can't, no I can't, I can't pretend to like it. Sorry. sorry I was, I was... She's also, in more recent times, released this banger. Handsomest man. Handsomest man. Oh my gosh, he's the handsomest man. I said no one can love me quite like you can That's because you're the loveliest man I'm so happy thanks to you I sleep well at night all because of you Close my eyes and dream of you, baby Every night until the sky turns blue Just for reference I also had to get a beverage. Sorry. I'm gonna pretend to like that. I can't. She's ruined it. She's ruined the whole episode. We're done. <laughs> Sorry. Finished. <laughs> no, obviously not. I'm only kidding. Um, <laughs> we, should, we should be fine to continue as long as she doesn't do anything, anything worse than that. Buzz. <laughs> Video after video, we would see Foodie eating away there. And every now and again, we would catch a glimpse or hear somebody else there with her in the apartment. I already did that. Hi, babe. Hi. I'm doing my Q&A. Yeah. Uh, we've been together for, it's going to be uh, six years. Baby! In April, I believe. We met on a the one that got away. dating website called Plenty of Fish. I'm sure Thanks. you guys are familiar. Oh, yeah. Uh... I don't know. For some reason, I continue to get mixed up the storyline of meeting BB. It was plenty of fish. It wasn't the club. That was other people. I, I blacked out, you know? I didn't catch one of those pervy guys. Uh, <laughs> do you have plans to marry in the future? <laughs> Sorry, AC. <laughs> yes. Foodie lived with a boyfriend, BB, and lived together in a very small apartment. So when she was doing a mukbang videos, he didn't really have anywhere to hide. But thankfully, though, she, she didn't mind sharing the apartment with him. So I'm excited. Um, she did. <laughs> I need to try this. Based on her words most recently, she seemed to have quite the issue with BB being loud in the background while, to paraphrase, she was trying to make money. I'm sorry for the loud noise in the background. <laughs> the TV. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about the noise. BB's watching a movie that involves some kind of giant spider monster creature chasing somebody for about an hour now, straight. So, so I'm today i'm not gonna lie i would not have tolerated that's just i'm a person sometimes okay and I'm, so i'm gonna cut the video short i don't know just one of those i'm just feeling in a bit just a bit of everything is irritating you know like how am i supposed to film a video go do it in the bedroom baby let your partner who's just been at work have some time even appear in a few of foodie's videos Gosh. and he always looked dead comfortable being there this is my boyfriend everybody and he's gonna do my makeup as requested, and he really hates me right now for this, so. Wee, 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 wee. 
if you were to take a clip show of Chantal's content to, like, just display her personality, that would be in it. Probably around the old maid era. <laughs> Whereas done uh, YouTube video style. Yeah. 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 Too bad a YouTube account for a while. Not the slow zoom on BB. Poor BB! Like a lot of you. But. Um. BB. Oh. Hi. Hi. No, obviously you didn't look comfortable. I was, I was just being silly. I actually felt a bit sorry for him. Every time she was putting the camera in his. He just looked, he just looked uncomfortable. He just seemed like a normal guy. Well, normalish. Normalish. Uh, fart on each other. We have. Maybe it's Chantel. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe it's Chantel. <laughs> oh dear. Have actually farted on each other. Um, I find that funny. He farted on my cat one time. It's not very nice. Now she may have wanted to marry Baby, but there seemed to be a time limit on their relationship. Do you and your boyfriend want kids? <laughs> my boyfriend wants lots of kids. I... <laughs> Maybe! <laughs> generally say I do. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I really don't want kids. Um, I don't think that I have the patience for it. I don't think that I'm, um, I don't think that I can be selfless enough sometimes. Oh, flatting. That's a good word, Mick. And if we have to break up one day, I know that's really horrible to say because we don't want the same things in life, then that, I guess that will happen. I mean, that's part of life, you know? It's eight years As well as BB, there was another eight. man character uh, who would appear in quite a few of her videos. Her ex-lover and now friend, James, better known as Pete. You're so vain, you probably think this comment is about you. All right, chat, who can explain to the new folk why his name is Pete? Well, it is. It's not, it's not a very complicated answer or reason. I don't know how I put up with you this long. Oh no. You said I have nice boobs, so. All boobs are nice boobs. I gotta move this for you guys. <laughs> pizza. Pizza was the answer. <laughs> Smack me in the head with an air freshener. <laughs> Foodie likes pizza. Foodie, I think... <clears throat> I said this one time, and it has forever stuck with me. I think Foodie is the type of... Foodie is the type of person who nicknames someone as, a, as, like, a power play. I fucking hate those people. Anyone who comes up to me and is like, Zacco! Big Zack! Ding Dong... Zack attack. Oh god, fucking kill me. No, shut up. <laughs> I I hate people like that. And every every person who like forces a nickname on another, it feels like a power play. And that's what I honestly thought it was with Foodie. She refused to she refuses to call people by their name. She will give everybody <laughs> not Zack and Nader. She she refuses to call anybody by their name. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong Zack attack. That was terrible. I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> it's not a good one. Stink that bad? <laughs> like, I'm not a chubby chaser. <laughs> it's just the chubbies chase me. What section is this? Oh, Lord. It's the Great Depression, <laughs> which is also what I call my sex life. What's his name? Well, that's true one, but that's when it comes into, like, buddy, mate, my dude. <laughs> Give the turkey. Those are fine. It's names. Hmm. Thanksgiving, Christmas. Oh, you're horrible. <laughs> not plump stuff. The pair did use the date and even live together. <laughs> One... Zaccaroni, I have received that once or twice, and it is always met with a scowl. Point we're engaged as well, <laughs> um, but now they were, they were just friends, and I'm, I'm glad. I'm so glad they stayed friends because now we get to know Pete's exists in the world, and I don't know what it is. There's just something about him that I really, really like. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Who knows? I don't wait. So that's, that's funny. Booty Beauty. That's that's the world she lives in. That's the characters that inhabit her world. All sounds oh, pretty dear. normal. Give me a minute. At this stage it's of the beard brigade. The research, I thought she isn't too dissimilar to Amber. Mundane videos, a few side characters, eaten on camera. Uh, I did notice one slight difference straight away though. She seemed ever so slightly grosser than Amber. Yeah. Yes. Yes. High key yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's that. There we go. The big sloppy wet ones. Sorry. I'm eating my cheat day. <laughs> Iconic 5 a.m. lobster mac and cheese. And I'm doing that because I really want it and I'm really hungry. I clogged the toilet. I felt like a, a little bit of a, you know, a pain, like a nagging pain down in my roll somewhere. I went searching. And oh, Pringle lid. And there was a Pringles cap stuck somewhere in my roll. Probably was there for like 12 hours. Septic mama. Oh, sorry, did I say she was slightly grosser than Amber? I meant she was absolutely minging compared to her. Not minging! She was way grosser, at least when Amber- She's way minging. Oh, I Wait, wrong accent. The farts, she uh, <laughs> has the decency to blame it on gunshot. <laughs> um, I put take it. <laughs> I just heard a gun. Minging is a great word, though. It's a really good word. I like that. Shot. Did you guys hear that? Foodie was just in a just a totally different league. I had been drinking by myself, bad idea. <laughs> And I decided to go online. <laughs> and I had been talking to this guy. He was like, you know, we're looking for another girl to fool around with. You know, we want to try having a threesome. Oh, this is vomit and shit all over the walls and floor. I don't think I should have shown up there drunk because I was like, hey, you know, it's probably so annoying. It was all, it was all the girlfriend's fault. So, you know, they were kind of, the girlfriend was just kind of like- They didn't have plumbing or toilet paper and she was there in a sweater and a thong. The get go, the- Why don't I know this? Girlfriend, I don't know what her problem was. If she, she either didn't like, wasn't attracted to me or she didn't like me or she, and she was jealous. You know what I mean? Cause she would, the whole night she was like looking at me. Like she was, she didn't pay attention to me. She would just give me dirty looks. The guy, I kind of got the same vibe. Like he was kind of just like, almost like he was going along with what she wanted. Couples are annoying when it comes to threesomes. Like either you want to do it or you don't. Wow. I wonder why they weren't into her. I go in the room and I'm like, do you mind if I get in bed with you guys? So I get in bed and the girl like kind of just shrinks away. And then after a few minutes, she's like, I think I'm just gonna go to bed. So I'm like, okay. But when you're already in bed, <laughs> it's so confusing. She's like, do you mind hitting the light when you leave the room? I'm like, you invited me here. You paid $120 for me to get here, and you're acting like a total. B I personally think catfish. Like, what's your problem? Uh, you, you, you were clearly the problem. And then the guy, the guy was like, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go to bed. Sorry, I'm just, we're just really tired, you know. The threesome story, or the non-threesome story, isn't what I find disgusting. Why so many of us know all of this by heart, Kimba? Drama. About this, people can be into whatever the one thing, be into poop for all I care. We call that foreshadowing. No, no, that, that's not the disgusting part. The, the, the next bit is the disgusting part. I woke up early the next morning. Naturally, I, I woke up to the feeling of having to be sick. So I ran like Both through the hands. hall, little hall, and it was a small bathroom uh, apartment. So their bedroom was right. Not the pooty sound effect. That, that's what separates the wonderfully edited content to. Not so wonderfully. Did you all catch that when you watch this? Which is running down this corridor. There's a little poot sound effect. It's great. Good job. There, that made me laugh. Inside the bathroom. I'm like, they're going to hear everything. They find the bathroom. Get on my knees. There's more of it. Oh, she's so gassy. Start doing my thing. <laughs> and um, this is gross, guys. So I, it comes out both ends. <laughs> and I had a skirt on. And a G-string. The barf goes projectile all over the wall. The poop goes all over their floor. No towels. Do you love the ragtime piano, whatever this is? Vaudeville? Vaudeville piano. That's what I'm thinking. Great. There's no paper towel anywhere in the bathroom. No toilet paper. I took some of my, I took my G-string off, cleaned up with some socks and some clothes I had in my bag, and I smelled bad. A very classy lady. I think we can all agree there. Uh, no, obviously not. Um, that was the first story you ever heard about Chantal Brandon? Fair. Look, when I... When Mine I... was the cheese graveyard, but this one was probably in the top 10 of first stories. I announced I was doing this series. She obviously wasn't very happy with me. First off, a documentary is supposed to be educational. There's nothing educational... Oh, this was the response to the reaction, or whatever it was. ...about me. You cannot tell me this series documentary isn't educational. I've learned that there's somebody grosser than Amberlynn Reed out there. And you might be saying, oh. I basically learned what not to do. It's good. Uh, Luke's, thank you very much for being here and for the super chat. I appreciate it, mate. Luke says, imagine if they were intimate and she got sick in the middle of it, throwing up and pooping. Well, considering Chantal's history of romantic partners, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> it's the snowflake. We've all gotten drunk before and made, a, made a fool of ourselves. And yeah, that's fine. We all have. See, believe it, you catch up on the little things. 
But have we all had sex with a random homeless man who stunk because we were horny? Horny, baby. Because we were horny after leaving. Stop it. He's an Austin Powers fan as well. Ah, oh, queen. Even a club. <laughs> have we? He wasn't too scruffy looking, but he was kind of scruffy, you know. We did it on the rock near the harbor. He didn't smell too homeless. Like, you know, he smelled a little, little, little bit like malt vinegar, but. If foodie beauty isn't the definition of class, I don't know what is. I don't want to know what class is if it isn't a. So many farty sound effects. Do you know what? Next time Mr. Snowflake's in here, I'm going to ask him if he can count all the fart uh, sound effects that he has in these documentaries. Because I think it might be higher than you think. I'm not the biggest fan, like I say, of watching people stuff the face with food and, and munching away. You wouldn't know that by the history of videos I've done before. But I'm not a big fan. Even if they're just... It's when they're talking. Even if it's a boring story... Or if it's a story about pooping on walls and cleaning it up with socks. Brilliant story. I'm not a fan it is of a good watching story. people eat and talk. Um, yeah, me neither. And I think that's the thing with... <laughs> I mean, that's why I zoom in so much. Again, trauma. Um, I think with Foodie's past content, like, it is the story times and the storytelling that really, like, got everyone together. Now, no one really cares. I mean, we are trying to find the story in all of this, which is, in current day, Chantel's health escapades and what's happening there. Because untreated type 2 diabetes while eating what Chantal eats every day is going to end in a not-so-good story. But she loved it. It, it. She loved the food. It got her the attention she wanted. But she was always changing her mind about a lifestyle. On the days that I don't do mukbangs, I'm going to eat very little. And whatever I eat is... Ooh, I miss the big nail energy as well. Bring back those days. going to be healthy. And um, I'm going to be starting a workout routine. Get my ass in shape. Whenever there's an overweight mukbanger telling me they're going to lose weight whilst stuffing the face, I think, no, you won't. Or when they say... That's sensible thinking right there. That might be diet starts Monday. It's not going to, is it? The clips I use there are from 2017, 18, 19, about then. And I'm making this series in 2024. Spoilers. She's lost no weight. I could make another series. Well, I mean, that depends on who you ask. <laughs> that... That depends on who you ask, because, like, Chantal's largest admitted recorded weight is, what is it, 402.9 or 402.7 or something, 402-ish, right? And that was, there was a time period pre-luxury villa, pre-luxury villa? I think just before moving, no, yes, I think just before moving to the luxury villa, where she was doing, um, like, life in, life, uh, day in a life of, or, like, my 400 pounds life or whatever the hell it was called <clears throat> the the wild thing and you all know i don't care about the weight on the scale but the wildest thing is like legitimately seeing comparison to not even that long ago like three four years ago and Chantal sitting there and being like nope i'm 60 pounds down from that weight it's like wow that's that's wild that's what something something must be going on beneath the surface because that's wild in 2028 and if she's still alive she won't have lost any weight then and yeah a, an overweight mukbanger struggling to lose weight isn't anything new especially for this channel having them lie to the audience that's nothing new as well so i haven't been completely honest with you guys i've been hiding some um binges i did have I guess that makes me a liar. I've not called her a liar there. She, that's that's all her words. You know, addicts are- Just in case anyone's confused, Foodie is a known liar. Her pants are always on fire. Liars. Addicts are liars, manipulators. Not... Oh, Mr. Snowflake, have fun. I've called her a manipulator again. That, that's all her. I'm really angry that I've- Enjoy filming. I hope it goes well. Good luck to you. I was so weak. Again, I've not called her weak. They're her words. There, there is a bit of self-awareness there. She knows that she's a weak, manipulating liar. So this is going to be a video of me owning some lies. She really hasn't done one of these in a hot minute. I feel like I need to kind of Who's this? admit to some things that I have lied about. Can you see why at this stage I thought her and Amber were basically the same person? They were very much on the same kind of trajectory of their YouTube. They're almost identical. One of the big lies that stood out for me though at this stage was when she pretended she was a vegan. I like that one. I... <laughs> 
sitting there eating chicken nuggets telling people these are vegan have been binging and i've been binging on dairy and chicken she would try the the keto diet vegan diet everything she tried every diet and, and none of it worked it's not like she she, she tried it once a day while she was filming the mukbangs and then outside of all of that none of that was happening didn't have medical professionals helping her. Had, <laughs> hey, baby. Hi. She had loads of people helping her, and every time she thought she knew best. Honestly, Lisa, I'm surprised. Have you watched this yet? It's so good. But imagine being morbidly obese. Morbid. Death. Morbidly obese. Actually, sorry. Just a just a little note there, Mr. Snowflake. Super morbidly obese. Super. Obese. I'm thinking you know better. That's not. That's not anything out. That's not me being shady. That's just the technical classification. Oh my god, Lottie, hi. Hello. <laughs> good evening. Happy happy Monday, rather. I hope you had a good weekend. Good to see you. The medical <laughs> Summoned by the mention of faux vegan. <laughs> professionals who are telling you exactly how to lose the weight. Probably the most... Just, like, the audacity. <laughs> Sitting there eating chicken nuggets, lecturing your audience about the benefits of these tasty vegan nuggets. <laughs> the biggest one for me is when she thought, I'm not going to... It's not shady if it's true. That's very true. Lose weight by listening to medical professionals. But instead... <laughs> I picked up the medical medium book, and yes, the medical medium is, he apparently has, he's a medium, so he has a spirit guide who tells him how- Help me. One day I'm actually going to have to write the list of foodies. Like, I, there are certain levels of fad diet, right? So, like, things that you can't necessarily see as a long-term lifestyle change, totally understand. Carnivore diet, keto diet- super low carbohydrate, super high carbohydrate. Like I under I understand there's a I understand that's not everybody's lifestyle and for a lot of people that would be really hard to maintain as an entire lifestyle change. But foodie beauties, hippy dippy woo woo diets. Like I need I need a list. There was the potato diet, the grape diet, multiple water fasts. There was um the fucking medical medium who spoke to spirits to give advice on best dietary practices. Fuck. There was some, there was intuitive eating and don't get, don't get, don't, don't get angry. I understand intuitive eating as a whole concept, but just not the way that foodie was fucking doing it. <laughs> Juice fast. Fruitarian. <laughs> so many. <laughs> there was high vibrational foods. So many, so many terrible, terrible, and I will call those fat diets. I won't necessarily call them lifestyle changes because I don't think they're things that you could, like, actively work into your lifestyle. Anyway. What would make someone healthy, how they should eat, etc. So, number one, I don't... Such good times. I don't think that people should just completely dismiss somebody who has over a million followers. Logan Paul has well over a million followers. Boogie, Boogie has millions of followers. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean they know what they're talking about. If I ever get to over a million followers... Subscribe now. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't just listen to people because they've got followers. No, please don't. Charles Manson had followers. I know I've come to the foodie verse much later than everybody else probably watching this has. But even if I was watching this in real time, I'm sure, I'm sure I would have known that the medical <laughs> like... medium wasn't going to do it for me. Ah, I see. so are you, are you enjoying the Herba Mate or? <laughs> a food addiction. <laughs> the Herba Mate. <laughs> Metellus <laughs> would make her do things like manipulate her audience, and that food addiction would also make her do more. The woo woo juice. Or uh, <laughs> uh, prostitute things. I got desperate and asked, <laughs> called one of my lovers. Oh no, okay, to spoil this for anyone. Sorry, this is, this is a fun game where I see a thing and I'm like, oh, that's right, that's this story. This is the one where she called over a guy for a good time and said, bring me Burger King? And then he forgot the sauce. I won't say which one. She got kind of upset. Which one? But I might not even remember which one. Oh, yes, I do. And anyway, um, this is bad. This is like low-key prostitution, but I offered him foreplay if he would come over and bring me um, a couple of Whoppers. I think it was Whopper Wednesday. Now that... Believe now that... Not, this isn't even the bad stuff in the foodie verse. But just like all the other mukbang channels I've mentioned there, Foodie would hate it when our audience would do exactly what she asked them to do. I'm saying this to you guys for accountability. I want you to help holding Foodie Beauty accountable. What a strange concept. Help me through this journey. I want. <laughs> I want. I really want to see this through. If I fall off the wagon on my diet. Oh. 
Man! <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. Someone, I hope, I hope someone told her that that foundation shade is not hers. Girl, look how orange you look. <laughs> oh no, that's a mis that's a whoopsie daisy. <laughs> that's a mistake. So shoot me, you know, like I'm trying here. You don't like it? Watch something else. Uh, there is a drag race quote or reference for every situation. <laughs> I'm gonna be starting treatment for my eating disorder. So, uh, <laughs> should go without saying that there won't be any more mukbangs. You come here for food, you come here for story, you don't come here to criticize. Welcome to day one. I have a McFlurry Oreo. I come here to criticize. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I want a McDonald's today, okay? Ooh, I remember watching this one. This was definitely in a, like, old school filmed reaction context. Ooh, fun. She got so mad at everyone because she bought a McFlurry. Foodie at this stage to me. Nothing unique, just another lazy person who thought she was a hard worker. And yes, it's just eating, but it still takes a lot of work, okay? Yeah, it used to take her all day to like film and edit. Don't you know, you guys, she used to work really hard with that. I work almost all day on YouTube. She always seemed to be telling her audience off with this angry, bitter tone. And she was, she was just an angry- <laughs> So you've met Foodie Beauty. <laughs> angry person in general. You know what annoys me even more than that is- Those are her glasses. These are the glasses that she still has. If you ever see Foodie Beauty wearing glasses, I believe these are the glasses. They are a 13-year-old prescription. Work. Probably that I can be, like, probably my anger. I anger very quickly, and I'm impulsive, so my anger and impulsiveness. At least she was self-aware enough to realise she had an anger problem and that she was too impulsive. But even being self-aware enough to notice that, she wasn't smart enough to do anything about it. See, and she still knows that. Someone would even go on to create the Chantal cycle. Iconic. She would start a new weight loss journey, mm -hmm. fail, mm -hmm. then take it out on her audience, tell us she was done with weight loss, yeah. and she'd be upset, telling us she needed to change, and on and on it went, just never learning from her mistakes. Um, I, I feel like the content cycle is kind of broken with Foodie, because we don't really see the diet-specific stuff anymore. We might see, like, some lifestyle stuff, faith. Um, sometimes some, like, diety stuff mixed in there as an overarching... But realistically, I don't know, like, it's less of a cycle now and more of an on-off switch. It's either foodies being, like, fake and insufferable, or foodies being mad at the audience. There's not, there's not, like, it's like the, it's like the circle got smaller, you know? I know Berlin's going through the same thing with her eating disorder. People are waiting for her to come back, like piranhas, and they're waiting for her to say, I failed, I've relapsed. And when you have a, an addiction, you relapse. And... Even if she's not getting the help she needs right now, and I, I don't feel like you should shame and hate on somebody who's going through that. I'll never, I'll never understand these channels that do. That's very true, Lottie. Do that, and there's loads of them. It's not just her. that is all day. I'd say, uh, come on, guys, come be invested in my journey. Oh, you're invested in my journey. Screw you. Why? I just I, I, they do it over and over. I just it boggles, it boggles my mind. It makes. It's because Foodie's a terrible person and has absolutely no respect for her audience, like. Me cr Surprise! Cringe when I hear one of the one of these channels say they're gonna they're gonna do it this time or they're starting a new journey because uh, well we all know how it's gonna end. Am I still on a weight loss journey? Um, not predominantly. I'm I'm not gonna say like I'm not gonna say I gave up candy, right? Right? I like candy spanks. Completely because I like a I like a blunt eye level bang. I'm still maintaining. There is a lot of personal reasons why I- I do not like this choco. I chose this decision. I have chosen to postpone weight loss surgery. Um, yes, it's not clickbait. I am going to be- <laughs> Or you're waiting on your coffee, buddy. <laughs> and with water, or water only. I know everybody likes to think that they're unique and that they're different to everybody else. I know Foodie does as well. You know, getting used to our types of humor takes some getting used to, you know? Foodie is quite unique. So, <laughs> we're very unique. She is. But at this stage, 
she's just the same as all the other mukbang channels I've covered. Uh, the only difference is she's pooped in a stranger's house. And I try to clean it up with socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is a funny image. Foodie's bad attitude wasn't just reserved for her audience, it would come into play in her real life as well, affecting her work. Now be prepared everybody, because we're about to hear another Foodie Beauty lie. I haven't been completely- Ooh, which one's this? To be honest with you guys, but I told you guys that I left, I had left my job because I, I had a one-year contract. I don't really do anything right now. I mean, um, I was on a, a one-year contract. It's in another video, and it was a maternity leave, so I was kind of just like doing contract work for a while. And this was a lie because she was, she was incompetent in her job, and she was leaving early. So <laughs> that's over with. So now I'm kind of the short form answer in my brain. Kind of just you know. Hey, shenanigans. Good to see you. On unemployment. The truth is, I was let go at my job. Her being fired had nothing to do with uh, her attitude or the quality of work she did. No, no, it was something else. Can you guess what she blamed it on? I bet you can't. And I, I felt like I was doing a good job. This is a fat phobia of the doctor. You know what I mean? It was the type of situation where no matter what you did, there was always something. It wasn't good enough. And I have a feeling like she just didn't want me there. You know what I mean? For some reason. She was always eating those damn salads and cycling through Italy. I don't know what. I don't know if she didn't like overweight people. She was a very health conscious person, always biking around Italy. <laughs> The fact that that sits in my brain, that makes me very happy. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Eating her <laughs> bean salad or whatever. And then, like, just, she was kind of condescending. You know what I mean? It was fat phobia. It was fat phobia <laughs> all along. I should have guessed. Uh, yeah. Be prepared for lots of that. Lots of fat phobia blaming. It's like playing trivia against yourself. It's really fun. She loves a victim card. Loves it. Where can I get one of them? I love the fact that she says uh, a boss was condescending right after... She was condescending about a boss being all healthy. I like that one. Not really self aware that time. Why she thinks it's not okay for anyone to judge her, her weight, her lifestyle, how she does anything, especially regarding food. But then she feels fine just talking about a boss and saying she was always healthy. She was always eating bean salad and biking. Mm. Well, because, like, rules for foodie do not apply to everybody else. You can't do She's the main character. She can do no wrong. Do that. Well, I mean, you can. That'll make you look like a hypocrite. But it will make you look like it. It'll make you a hypocrite. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm being harsh though. Maybe, I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Maybe I'm being harsh. Maybe she was actually fired because she was fat. Mm, I, can no. I can only go off Foodie's own words. Her just always berating my work. Like, um, that's that's where I'm kind of immature. If something pisses me off and it's not going right, I become very discouraged and I just just don't give a anymore. I started to lose motivation to come to work. So I I did. I called him sick a lot. <laughs> I had a talk with my boss a, a little while ago that it wasn't just wasn't working out. And then she's like, well, I don't know what we're going to do. So I just kind of coasted along and I thought, I'll just deal with, deal with whatever happens. So my boss said, we are letting you go effective immediately. So the boss wasn't happy with her work. So then she started to coast along, didn't care, rain and in sick. You know, she's telling us the story. Like she's the one who's been wronged here. She's the victim. There's that victim card. Anyway, even after admitting how terrible she was at a job, she still thought that she was unjustly fired. She gave me the termination letter. I still have it says nothing again she's the main character you can't just get rid of her about calling in sick nothing about being inadequate on the job you know what the reason was is that they checked to go in and out of the parking lot you have to use your badge to swipe in and out they checked the parking lot badge swipes and it was determined that i had left work early on a regular basis which is absolutely bullshit. now to be fair to foodie that's wrong if she never left work early and they're firing her for that that's that's ridiculous and she, she should sue i never got out of there early maybe two or three minutes you know, on occasion. On a Every now and then. Never mind, okay. I'm technically not supposed to talk about what happened, but it... <laughs> yeah, she signed an NDA. Uh, a what are they going to do about it now? It's a shame they didn't do anything about it. Non-disclosure agreement. Now, I'm not no <laughs> fancy city... Oh my god, Dank. Lovely to see everyone say hi, Dank. ...the lawyer, but I'm pretty sure that's breaking uh, the NDA, isn't it? Non-disclosure agreement. And she's disclosed everything. And not be okay with me leaving early, buddy? Ugh. Terrible workplace. This whole video, her talking about being fired, I think it's the perfect example of how a mind works. How it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Because normal people will watch- He did that little thing again. <laughs> this and think, what are you, <laughs> you talking about? You were awful, but in her mind, she- I feel like I'm picking up the little tells of Mr. Snowflake when he's really chuffed. Chuffed? Do you like that one? Mingin and chuffed. Um, when he's really chuffed with a- with a little, a bit or a joke. You know, a little giggle. 
very cute. Is uh, <laughs> she's been hard done by? I also really liked uh, the part where she was complaining about another doctor that she did some work for. And he would call in sick a lot, so I had to rebook his patients a lot, and he was already jam-packed. And when you're dealing with people with mental disabilities and schizophrenia, they become very anxious. They need to see their doctor, you know? She called- I don't know what dip this is. Branch? Probably right. Calls in sick a lot, and then complains that somebody else is calling in sick a lot. Is it just me, or is she starting to sound legitimately insane now? That is- that- that's nuts, isn't it? Not just me. Anyway, after she was fired for- I just don't think she- like, I have often tried to apply my own form of logic to Chantal logic, and it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. It's like every time she yells at someone on the internet for having an opinion or criticizing them or whatever, yeah, well, I may do this, but you do that. It's like, but, like, you can't, the, the logic just never makes sense. And I hate to use the word hypocrisy because I feel like there's a better word for it, but... She's never, she's never, she never seems to have contemplated the idea of like, just because other people do it doesn't mean I need to do it. Yeah, there is no logic, full stop. Her boss is fat phobia. She, um, she lived off the settlement, she got a big settlement from work, she lived off unemployment. Phoebe, who worked as a security guard, she lived off him as well. And that's, that's what gave her the chance to sit at home stuff on her face. So it all worked out in the end. I was actually happy. I was actually, I'm like, you know what? On a positive note. She also seems like an entirely different person in her old content. Like I get it. I, and like I said earlier, I seem different to when I was first reacting as well. Um, but she seems like a legitimately different person now. She just seems a little bit like, I don't know what word to use. A little bit less energy, a little bit more rage, not more rage, but a different type of, it's like everything's just kind of consistently simmering under the surface. All things happen for a reason. Yeah, the reason you were fired was because you were crap at your job. Let's not pretend the universe had this big master plan for you. Crap at your job, got fired. It's an open and shut case. <laughs> she had a terrible attitude at work. She had a horrible attitude with her own audience. Very apparent, buddy. <laughs> Surely she would have been a bit nicer too, I don't know. Her own mother. No. I was living in a group home. When I was like 16, 17. And I was sent there by my mom. She was a- That was, um, oh. Why do I always forget this name? No, I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of the one where she was going to build wooden bunk beds with the- Katimovic, that one. That was different to the group home. Single parent, she didn't really know, you know, I was horrible. She had me young, she had me at 17, I was- the only child. It's group home. It was group home and then Katimovic. Is that the timeline? I think it is because she was slightly older in Katimovic. Well, I, I have a sister, but she... Dang, I have watched part of it, yes. She was so young, you know. And I, I really appreciate it because it does... I watched, like, I think a third or the first half or something. Um, and it was quite enlightening because I wasn't around during the Crystal Era of Anne Boleyn. Um, so there was a lot of, like, little things that I didn't know, such as, like, the, like all of the animals and stuff. I had no idea. And I was the only child for so long. I was 11 when she was born. Oh. I'm much more knowledgeable about the um, destiny into now timeline. I was a spoiled brat, plain and simple. When I didn't get my way, I freaked out. You know, that and your teen angst issues, daddy abandonment issues, <laughs> the list goes on. I think I just had like spoiled brat syndrome. I was sent to the group home following, um, you know, a major incident. One day I was fighting with my mom about something. I don't even remember. Probably at that time, because I wanted to go sleep at my boyfriend's and be allowed to screw him all hours of the night at my age. We were- Yeah, quite a bit of voodoo. Fighting, you know, she went downstairs to fold clothes. I came down a few minutes later. I emptied out half my bottle of, um, I think it was Zoloft I was on, antidepressants or something. It didn't work. I showed her the bottle and I said, I'm gonna kill myself. I took half the bottle and I hadn't, I really didn't. What a terrible experience. You know, I, I never intended to really do it. I wanted attention. I knew that gave me power threatening that. So That's so fucked. She's like, what? Are you kidding? She was freaking out, you know? So she yeah, as she fucking would be. Oh, God. I hate hearing this story. She took me to the hospital. I had the biggest nurse ever. Like, ever. She was a big Chantal, you are not coming off well in this. Just FYI. Was she, though? Was she that bad? Out of the two of you? Out of this story, she said, I've, I've faked attempted this thing, and also I had a Bitchy nurse. Wow, girl, read the room. I bet you were the worst one. Annoying nurse? Fake trying to end her own life 
to get power over her own mother. Yeah. Like, and the fact that she acknowledged that, like, it was, like, it's so fucked as well. Because if she had never had said that statement of, and I knew that gave me power over her, I would have been like, if you'd have said, like, you were, you were you knew you were doing it for attention or you were feeling lonely or, like, whatever, there's a lot of, like, sympathetic energy that I could put into there. And don't get me wrong, like, Chantal obviously have, has a lot going on up there and I'm sympathetic to that situation. But, fuck, if you sit there and say, I'm going to do this terrible thing and then tell my mother and I know that gives me power over her because it's going to cause, like, fear and panic and worry and, like, concern... For someone who you apparently love and and loves you, like that shit's so fucked up. That's so fucked. Oh, it's it's a close one. It's a close one. She was like, "You're gonna drink this." It was like a drink. I think it was charcoal. And I was like, "Oh no, what if this? You know, I really didn't take the pills. So what if the charcoal has a negative effect if you don't, if you haven't taken any pills? You know?" It's like I actually better take the pills. So in the bathroom, I actually took some pills. And then I thought I'll just drink the charcoal. You guys probably think I'm nuts. I was. Yeah, you sound awful. Awful. You sound really awful. And stupid. Yeah, stupid too. Yeah, you sound stupid, yeah. Then I had said, you know, I just got really scared and I was like, I had actually, um... All this while eating a fucking Dagwood dog. I didn't really take them before, I just said that. But now I actually did. They put me in a room, make me drink that, and they decided I was going to stay the night. Good. <laughs> if you don't know the story, you're probably thinking, doing this to our own mother. It, it can't get any worse than that. But it does. So that is like particularly terrible and terrifying. Like, I, oh god, I was in I, I bad for mom. I was at like a children's hospital, but I was still underage. They put me beside an exit girl, Jen Anorexia. I made friends with her. She was being tube fed and sure all day. Well, for her meals, not all day, but for her meals. And it was sad because her family would come often. You could tell her family really loved her, and they would bring her all kinds of candy, big tubs. We're talking. We become friends, and I was just like, man, those candies. That's funny to Chantal. Funny to Chantal to be in bed next to someone suffering with anorexia and asking them for her candy. I had said to her at some point, are you going to eat those candy? And I think she kind of caught on because she, like, she gave them to me. She gave me her candies. Foodie beauty. Beauty. Mariam. Chantal Marie, whatever she's calling herself these days. Whatever she's calling herself by the time you watch this. Took food away. I took food away from a young girl who was struggling with anorexia. That's nuts. That is nuts, isn't it? It's not just me. It's not even the worst thing she's done. It gets worse. What's wrong with her? Seriously, I'm asking you, what's wrong with her? It's a very good question, Mr. Snowflake, and a very large one. And I feel like a whole team of healthcare professionals would probably take some time to unpack that question. Oh yeah, she's a spoiled brat. Her words, not mine. With no empathy. That was my word. Like, why even... Even if the stories aren't true, why even present it to the internet as if it were? Like, it do, what, what does that make you? So she treats her... It's wild. ...audience badly, her own mother badly, plays her work badly, Strangers suffering with Anna badly. Surely she would be nicer. Well, Lottie, you're very, you're very right. Chantel is not the queen of subtlety. The two, I don't know. Her own sister. Nope. Foodie's younger sister was in a video with her, sat eating dinner. And for some reason, Foodie decided to, uh, to comment. Nat? Yes. Nat. I should mention that my little sis has a disability, thus the mildly antisocial behaviour. If I didn't see this comment, like most people, if I didn't see this comment, I wouldn't have thought she has a disability or anything like that. So I don't know why she felt the need to do that. At first, I did think, oh, she's trying to be mean to her own sister, but then I thought... That one. Well, why would you be, why would you be mean to your own sister? Have you met Foodie Beauty? But then, I discovered that a foodie, apparently, apparently, I have to say that a lot. She is also not the queen of flips, you're right, Salva. ...had been incredibly mean to her own sister. A post went up on Kiwi Farms from a woman named Kathy, who claimed she was friends with Foodie back in their high school days. Her sister is a sweet girl, she would say, wouldn't hurt a fly. She grew up with Chantal telling her she was ugly and dumb. And we've talked about this ad nauseum with Chantal. The fact that Chantal's been on the internet for a really long time, and it doesn't matter what she says, does, presents, fights about, yells about, screams about, throws a tantrum about, stumps her feet about, doesn't matter because... 
in the end, I feel like the majority of the audience who watches Chantal, regardless of like anyone else's opinion, comes to the conclusion that usually, like, the worst is often correct when it comes to Chantal. We would be eating and watching movies, and this poor kid Morning, would sit Smith. at a chair by the doorway where she couldn't even see the screen because Chantal wouldn't let her sit beside us on the couch. This Cathy also went on to say, Don't assume she struggled because she's overweight. Chantal was part of the main clique in high school. She was never bullied, but did sleep with almost every boyfriend her friends had. Her mother, Kim, worked for Red Cross with the disabled, and Chantal would mock and make fun of them. She calls other big girls fat and obese when upset. She put her mother through hell. The woman worked full time raising a spoiled overeater and a disabled young girl who never even had the last piece of any dessert. Because Chantal had to have it, or she would tantrum. Oh, and the way Chantal picked on her sister always told her she was ugly and stupid. I always felt it was because her sister's dad married Kim when Chantal's dad ran when she was two. The wild thing of that, okay, don't, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not well versed in any of this, right? Well versed in Chantel. Well, relatively well versed there. But, like, I don't remember anything before I was, like, four. So, I don't, I don't know. I feel, I feel as if I had, I had, like, a mum remarry when I was two. Like, there might, there might be some, like, underlying stuff there. But I don't, I don't feel as if there's, like, a lot that I'm missing in the memory between one, and, like, zero and two. Do you know what I mean? No, just because somebody posts something online. Marissa, hello, good morning. And obviously, it doesn't mean it's true. In fact, most of the time when I see something posted, I think, nah, that that's not true. However, for some reason, I'm going to say for some reason a lot with her, aren't I? For some reason, Foodie decided to uh, to send... Like that logic doesn't make sense. A child... But I don't know. ...hood friend an email. And it's a lovely read. Actually, I won't read the whole thing. But it's on screen if you, if you do want to read it. Uh, it's Foodie being very angry. That oh, this was when she was the Chantel show. Kathy started all this. She says in the email, Kathy has self-hatred issues. She goes on to talk about how... <laughs> I really want to read this out. Do you want to hear it read out? I get to bust out the foodie voice. Oh my god, it's been so long. <clears throat> the Chantal Show, to me. One day ago. Okay, so if you could stop acting like a crazy teenager and creating... 100,000 fake accounts trying to harass me. That would be wonderful. You are taking this way too far. And guess what? It is all your fault. You started this. You flip out because you see that I call one of my trolls an exceptional individual in the figurative sense. Wow, her, her language has really declined. A long time ago in self-defense... Okay, yet I have screenshots of me saying it to you on Facebook as a joke, but that time it was okay, right? This seems very... This seems very behind the curtain. <laughs> All this bullshit excuses... Excuses, rather, for you to be pissed for no reason because you have self-hatred issues, which is why you used to cut... Oh, dear. And threaten ending yourself, and now you're taking it out on me. You sit there and talk... About my ED with my trolls, but what about my... Uh, what about the harm you used to do? Again, don't come for me, gently, unless your closet is clean, which it is not. I know... <laughs> that saying is, well, don't come for me unless your closet is clean. What's wrong with a dirty closet? I never mentioned anything about hard things, and you are making poop up now. You are in the wrong here as a friend. If you were offended by something I had said years ago online, FFS, all you had to do was message me on Instagram, but instead, like a coward, you block me and become my biggest troll. How would you feel if it was your kids who were bully or being trolled online? Our friendship is over. If we ever had one, which is apparent to me, we never did, but it is so, so, so low of you to bring up 20 years of information, most lies and exaggerations, stuff that we talked about in confidence as friends, but you have no boundaries and you have no morals and you have no soul and Foodie has no motherfucking pronunciation. <laughs> you are in a very dark place and I would get help if I, if that, for that. If I were you, tell me, as a parent, do you have the time to sign up to forums with edgy names like Manif 
can't. When you are a single mother of two, what kind of example are you setting for them? See, the, the mother judgment really started pretty early in Foodie's YouTube career. I know you are in Yarmouth. I read that as Yarnmouth. The crocheters in the community would be so happy to visit Yarnmouth. And I have all the screenshots of the harassment you have been putting me through. For what? A lousy comment I made? Pfft, go cry in a corner. FFS and grow up. You have always been a whack job and all of Cornwall knows that if you ever mention another thing about me online and I will be checking. <laughs> I will be sending all of my screenshots to Child Protective Services in your town and to the authorities for harassment. This has gone too far. Enough is enough. And by the way, honey, BB has his permanent residency so shove your threats up your pooper. And sure, a lot of online idiots hate me. Hell, at this point, with that time they spend on me, it's a fucking fan club. And you can now say you are just as low as they are. Congratulations. All right. I'm pretty shocked that people don't like it. Kathy used to self-harm. And threaten suicide. Mm. God, who would threaten suicide? Can you imagine, Booty? Can you imagine anybody doing that? I'm going to kill myself. I took half the bottle. And, I... and then holding that over their own mother as a power play food. I hadn't. I really didn't. No, I faked a suicide attempt because I was desperate for attention. Foodie goes on to say our friendship is over, claims most of what Kathy says are lies. She has a problem with Kathy's online name. There are a number of run-on sentences, Marissa. I feel like a red pen would run out of ink on this. Being manic. And I found the only people who have a problem with the word are the ones who act like c also, foodie. Personally, I think the word's fun as an Australian. Also, if you are watching, please tell me if you're watching um, UK versus the world drag race, are you all noticing a lot of C bombs being dropped? Because I am. As an Australian, I'm shocked. Because you don't usually see it on the telly. In public all the time, but usually not on the telly. Goes on to threaten Kathy with child protective services to, uh, to get her kids taken away from her. If she ever mentions anything about her in the future. What a wild fucking threat. That's crazy. This one hurt me brain for a bit, I'll admit. Because I like part of the, the not part of the fun. Part of the intrigue is, is uh, when I'm making these videos on people is trying to understand why they do what they do. Is it something from childhood? Is it whatever it is? I, I like trying to figure it out as an armchair psychologist. And, and I just couldn't figure this one out. Why you would threaten Foodie hates people. Short answer. Foodie hates people. And have somebody's kids taken away because the dead speak out against you online. I can only assume it's because Foodie thinks she's amazing. I'm like prettier than like 90% of people on YouTube. Roll credits. I'm gonna call Child Protective Services on you. And you know what? I stand by that. I don't think that um, usernames like Manic to harass people um, deserves to have kids. She was going to get this woman's kids taken away from her for, for daring to speak out against her on the internet. Or was she? Yeah, of course I'm not going to call Child Protective Services. So she never had any intention to get this woman's kids taken away from her? No, she just wanted to threaten it. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's true anymore. I don't know what's a lie and what's not. I don't even think Foodie knows what, what's a lie. I think she just says things in the moment. Yeah, Sarah, see, that's the thing. Hearing it from a drag queen, work diva. And then calms down later and then thinks, right, what can I do next? Talking about me online, um, I, you know, I've... <laughs> it's a pretty good one, Lottie. <laughs> I wouldn't... <laughs> I, I don't know, I just... You're exceptional. <laughs> that hurt my feelings. I... It does seem quite backhanded. ...need to work on building a better opinion about myself to, so I don't let others get to me and become so defensive, you know? Well, we know how that went. All right, chat, I've really got to... I've really got to run. So, we're stopping this at the 46-minute mark. It's okay. We've still got 30 minutes left of it. So we're going to put a pause on here. We're going to call this part one and say goodbye. Everybody say goodbye, Mr. Snowflake. Goodbye, Jimmy Bunker behind the camera. Um, we'll say goodbye now and we'll hopefully catch up before or during the weekend when part two is set to come out. But we'll probably catch up on like either tomorrow night or Thursday night. So put a pin in it. We're just going to put a pin in this one. Bye. All right, chat. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate you all. I hope you had a good time watching a little bit of, well, the same content, but in a different format. Um, thanks for hanging out. Thanks very much for being here. Please make sure you drink your water, get your steps in, have a nap, a snack, hug your loved one.
say hi to your pets for me. Maybe, I don't know, try a new recipe. Um, thank you again to Mr. Snowflake for the video, obviously. For those of you on the rewatch, I appreciate your comments, opinions, and eyeballs. Chat, if you'd like to hit the like button on the way out, I very much appreciate that too. You've been great, and I've been Poppy, and I will see you 